the Lord is in all of us and that we can see each other and go beyond this and see Christ in this. That's very important. Oh, thank you. That's good right there, brother. But before I start, um, I want to look into everybody's eyes. And I want to say that if I've offended, if I've fallen short, if I hurt anyone by my actions, by my deeds, by my words, please forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, but please forgive me. You guys are important to me. You guys are my family. I hold every one of you guys very dear to me. And they're just not words because I say that because even my own family um, has <sighs> has rejected. But they don't reject me. They, re they reject the Lord in me. So if you've gone through that, rejoice in it. For the Lord says, this is the day the Lord has made. Be glad in it and rejoice when those things come. And sometimes you can say, wow, I, I don't know if I can rejoice. I just got kicked out of my brother's house. No, it's a blessing. Because it's not you that they're rejecting because from day one, even the Lord says, if they hate you, they hate it. me first. Amen? So, <clears throat> I want to just open up and talk a little bit about me, and I want to make it really short because it's not about me. Okay, and I want to talk about the word compromise. We are coming into a time, into a season, a preparation. The triumphant entry, just like the Lord came into Jerusalem. We will be able to see that when the Lord starts moving in this body. The Lord might not be physically there going in, but the Lord is physically there in all of us as he takes us there. And that's important. We have to be mindful of who we are as ambassadors, as heralds, as people of God who have been chosen. We don't take it lightly. We cannot take it lightly. We cannot take it for granted. We cannot compromise. We cannot fall asleep. Awake, all of us, awake. That's what the Lord is saying. If you look around right now, you guys are here every Friday. Why do I say that? Because I want to be here every Friday. You guys desire to be here every Friday. You can be anywhere else. Uh, I think the fair just opened up, right, brother? Okay, you guys can be there tonight, but praise God you're here. Amen? So compromise. Um, early on in my, in my faith, I compromised my walk, working in a setting that was violent, um, a prison system. I thought that by using profanity to the inmate population and preach the gospel to them would help them understand because that's what they understood. I was wrong and I got corrected But my brother Tony. I love him for it. Um, it didn't come as a surprise because I knew it was going to come. When my eyes were open, my ears started hearing the truth of the Lord. Um, and he even knew that I was smoking cigars when I first came here. And the Lord took that from me too. But I wasn't hiding anything. There's no secret places because the Lord reveals everything 
in the light. Um, even to the point where in the beginning after I stopped drinking uh, alcohol 18 years ago, I compromised by telling myself that drinking and duels with no alcohol on it is okay. But then I had a brother tell me, he says, why are you drinking that? And I said, well, it's, there's, there's no alcohol in it. He says, well, even if there wasn't, you're holding a bottle that's, that is similar to a beer bottle. Aren't you compromising your faith and having your witness robbed of Christ in your life? And I go, ouch. And he was right. And I thanked him for it. But when those corrections come in any form by a brother or a sister, embrace it. Don't get upset because if you know that that brother or sister has your best interest as a believer and wants to see you grow because they love you, embrace it. Okay, my mother had a saying, you can be happy as quick as you got mad. There's too much energy in being upset because that also robs you of your witness. Okay, so that's where I was. I'm one day closer to the Lord. Praise God that uh, he's sovereign, that he loves me and he loves you and that we love each other and we're here to walk this out for the remainder of our days here on this earth because he is coming back and if you've been listening to the sermons that the lord has been giving pastor tony they have come with a gentleness of a reprimand and a rebuke in them in preparation for what is to come for this body of believers with the remnant throughout the world that he's going to take forward. Okay. It's not, it's no longer just a conversation. It's no longer just, well, is it going to happen? No, it's happening. I can remember when I first met Tony, and I can remember when we were here banging out the walls, all of us putting up the stage. And now look, now we're running out of room. And I'm so thankful that there's so many faces in here that he's adding, okay? One of the things that I take serious is what Titus chapter one, tells an elder in Titus chapter 1 6 9 it talks about our responsibility Wesley as an elder elders of the body we are held to a higher standard along with the pastors along with the lead pastors associate pastors and we are constantly under a microscope And it might be uncomfortable, but that's what stretches us closer and deeper with God. Okay? Compromise. If you ever feel that you need to approach me and bring correction, please do. Please do. Because we are not beyond reproach as leaders of this church. I know I'm not. The Lord is just doing a work in me where I'm becoming less and he's becoming more. And I'm content with that. I'm truly content with that. <clears throat> so I thank the Lord for that. But let's talk a little bit about compromise. Um, uh, it, number one, it, it, it just, like I said earlier, it destroys our witness for the Lord. 
whether we go to a shopping center, whether we go put gas, there's always a preparation of a heart for you first, of the heart, and then God goes out ahead of you to, to prepare a heart there. The harvest is, is ready. It's plentiful. Okay? Look around outside. People are going to hell, and sometimes we just get concerned that we're in a hurry to put gas and we want to leave, but there's a homeless guy asking you for something. You don't have to give him a dollar if the Lord says don't do it. Give him Jesus. That's going to be a lot more than a, what a dollar bill can buy him. Amen. In compromising, we also submit to a partial obedience to the Father. We can make excuses up, okay? Well, it's not that big of a sin. And again, I'm using myself. Well, smoking a cigar is not that serious, is it? No, but if I, have the, if I am the temple of the living God, why am I putting something in his temple that is desecrating it. Why am I doing that? Tony says something that was really powerful. Um, Pastor Tony. Excuse me, brother. By the way, he's on a sabbatical. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord used him to speak and this spoke really loud to me. He says, why are we entertaining a conversation with Satan? Why are we listening to the lies? If he's the father of all lies, deceit, a murderer, why are we even listening to him? Why are we having a one-on-one -on -one conversation here with them? Instead of having a conversation with the Holy Spirit for empowerment, for a control, for victory, his victory. It's not even yours. God is magnified in your victory because he shows himself great. Amen? And then we try to, well, we try negotiating with God. How many of us have done that? I know I have. This is, this is one where... Um, It's going to touch a lot of us is it? because at one time I was very guilty of this. I loved my grandchildren so deep that at one time my children would come to the house high. But for fear of not telling them they can't come into my home that way, into our home, into his home, the Lord's home, because of my love for my grandchildren, for fearing that they were going to take them away from me or not bring them back, I wouldn't say anything. What a coward I was. And now I tell them, I, I will bring them over. I told them one time, and that's all it took was one time. If you come and visit me, please don't do what you're doing. No drinking in here, no smoking in here. And just spend an hour with us, whatever you want. If you want to leave, then leave. And they heard the voice of the Lord. They didn't hear Ray. Because I gave them the message after prayer and supplication. And I loved on those kids. The way the Lord would love on me. Because sometimes we want to take that correction, even for our children. And we want to put the Bible in a big burly sack and beat them with it. That's not going to accomplish nothing because if you guys remember those men or women that did that to us, it didn't go very well because it wasn't done in love, in truth, with tenderness, kind hearted, with the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? <clears throat> it causes compromise in the family, with our children. 
and even with their spouse. That we can love our spouse, I'm guilty, to a point that I had to step back. As a husband or a wife, I love you, Tony. There's a lot of things that can be said from a husband or wife. But sometimes they just will hear it, but they don't receive it. They hear it, but they don't receive it. And what am I saying by that? Caesar, you love your wife. Okay, she loves you. I'm not picking on you. But now there's some things that she has shared with you that you say, well, I want to hear from the Lord. Right? I've said that. How many of us have done that? I know I have. I'm guilty of that. But what you don't realize is that your wife was used by the Lord to speak to you. Our wives or our husbands who are empowered speak to us. And then God gives us a discernment to know you're right, Lord. Thank you. So it's not even your spouse that's giving you the, the correction or the word or the encouragement. It's the spirit of the Lord in them that gives you that. Okay, amen. Thank you, Lord. It, comp it compromises, our faith compromises in forming alliances that can have us worshiping idols. And what do I mean by that? There was a time that I compromised my faith by not even coming to church on Sunday, not coming to church on, on Friday. Monday through Sunday, let's just call it what it is. I compromised because I wanted to spend all day in the garage working on my cars. And I was not witnessing to anybody. I was not being used for the kingdom of God. That's compromise. The cars became an idol. And the Lord had to show me that. It got to a point where I didn't even want to pull them out of the garage because they were all painted and clean. And I, I washed them and I put them back in. I should have just got on my knees and idolized them, not even knowing that's what I was doing. So I thank the Lord that he showed me that. We also have to be very mindful of one area, is to partnership with unbelievers. Not that we're any better. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, well, you're not, you know, you're not a Christ father. I can't talk to you. No, we need to talk to them. It seemed to go deeper with them, fellowshipping. Some of us here, or well, mostly everybody here, we've been going into each other's homes. Okay, we've been sh breaking bread. We've been loving on each other, sharing times with one another. The unbelievers that are coming, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them coming. Okay? Prepare your hearts. Okay? Because that's when you have to become the lowliest. The lowliest. And they're the greatest. Because that's what God did with us. When we were at our worst, he was at his best as the Lord. When I share that, when I share Galatians two, um, we all know, we all know that Paul rebuked Peter. Some of us, I hope that we know. Okay, there was a time when there was a confrontation in the book of Galatians between Paul, the great apostle, and then Peter, the apostle. And in that, in 
In that rebuke, Paul brought correction to Peter, which drove him apart, only to further the kingdom. I'm saying this to you, that when correction is given to those who are opposing you, we're not opposing the person. What, 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 what is said, uh, hate the sin and not the sinner, amen? Okay, so we're not opposing the brother or the sister in that correction. We're exposing them because they're not living in the truth of the Lord. It's not Christ that lives in them, so we bring a gentle correction to them. And don't be glad in it that, well, I'm going to go around and just bashing everybody over the head with correction. No, we don't do that. Because you have to be able to receive it first before you can give it. Amen. And that's something that we're not really good at. Uh, sometimes I'm not. I'm terrible. I'm just, forgive me, Lord. <sighs> We are to be the salt and the light of the world. How can we be effective if we don't give the gospel a taste that others want to come and eat more of? How can we bring the light into darkness if, if your light's just dim because of all the compromising and those who are watching your walk, who are placing you under the microscope says, well, I thought he was a Christian man. Be mindful because as a believer, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot be effective in our faith when we compromise, in our walk, in our words, and in our character. That's where the book of James says, to look into the mirror intently and see who you are. And then we walk away and we forget. Well, I'm just Ray Gonzalez again. Well, Ray Gonzalez doesn't hold any weight in the kingdom of God. It's Christ in me that makes me righteous to be gain entry into the throne room of God. Because if I was to walk in there by myself without his hedge, his protection, I'd be like those bugs in that zapper. I'm gone. But praise God that he does the work in us. Praise the Lord that he sanctifies us daily. That he draws us nearer to him. Tenderly. Lovingly. And then we embrace the correction. Because it's good. This is the day the Lord has made. So we rejoice and we are glad in it. Amen. Where this church is going right now, I'm almost done. Father God, I just ask for an empowerment on me and on your people. Open, Father, the floodgates of heaven. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear. Fill them with the Spirit, Father. Give them wisdom and knowledge, Lord. Fill their mind right now, Father, for what is to come that you're bringing, that you are bringing, that we're going to be a part of. And we're so eternally grateful for that, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Last couple of weeks I've been um, I don't want to say being been getting beat up. Sanctification is wonderful. So we might say, well, am the Lord really beat me down. No, it's sanctification. We're in the furnace. That's the best place to be. And I said, Lord, may you always have an account on me because that's what keeps me at my knees in front of you. Don't never let me believe 
in this warped mind of mine that's full of flesh in this wicked heart that I'm about something with you and I don't need you and you need me more than I need you. Amen? Does it ring a bell? Because I know I do it sometimes. It's like, man. But we do it less and less. Okay? That's what sanctification does to us. I love you guys. And I have to say it before I bring the word. No, I say it because I mean it. I love Tony. I love you, brother. And I'm not going to cry up here. You can't, you can't make me. Um, Revelations. Two. If you want to go there, go there. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, Revelations 2, 1 through 4. And I'll read it out to you, okay? It says, to the church in Ephesus, Father, prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Prepare our hearts. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name. And have not grown weary. Yet. I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. And the forsaken of our first love. Is compromise. Where the Lord is taking this body right now. As the remnant and preparing Compromise cannot come. Search your hearts for a pure and contrite heart. And that starts with me. I'm not exempt from that. that man, pray for me, please. And I don't even say that. I mean, I'm really pray for me because I'm praying for all of you in that. This word was given to me, how long has it been, Tony? Three weeks? And I talked to Tony about it. I said, Tony, the Lord's been not quiet, but he gave me something so powerful that I cannot give it without him giving it through me. I can't. It's, it's, he's saying that because of what you're doing, you don't love me anymore. I said, man, Lord. I do love you. But then why did he have to ask Peter three times? Peter, do you love me? It's stirring our hearts for more of him. It's stirring our hearts to go deeper with him. And if he has to ask three or 70 times seven, then keep asking because where he's taking us, where he is leading us, there will be things that have to be done because of his order. We are to come beside our lead, the, the, the lead pastor, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, and one another, okay? We have the great shepherd. And then we have our shepherd. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm guilty of this. And I, I saw him back there and I said, Tony, you're on a sabbatical. If you need anything so you can keep your sabbatical, give me an assignment. I'll go forward. I need to start doing more of that. Amen. I, I think I speak for all of us, but more so for me. You know, the Lord has not appointed us for a time as this to sit like 
I used to sit years ago and be a, a pew potato in church. Amen. So in all of that, last night, around 2 o'clock, a little after 2, he gave me a dream. And like I said, now let's go back a little bit. He was quiet. He gave me the scripture. And then this morning, he put it together. And normally, typically, I'm searching the scriptures. All I have is a page and a half because he gave it to me. Well, before, I remember the first time the brother asked me to give a word. I had like 16 pages. And they were Ray Gonzalez pages. Who was I fooling? You know what I'm saying, Blaine? <laughs> I'm guilty, bro. <laughs> Thank God, man, for his love. Who, man. So last night he gave me a dream. And I pray that this will prepare your hearts to what is to come. I was standing in a group of people. We were fellowshipping. I don't know what exactly I was doing in my dream. And to the right side, the sky cracked open. In the crack, it was like, a bright light, like like a, what you see on TV, like an atomic bomb blowing up, but there was no sound, and I felt the the ex the 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 exhale and the inhale, and as the light as the light just lit up the whole side of the world where I was standing on, from east to west or north to south, whatever it was, there was what I thought was a dove at a distance. But as the dove on the exhale got closer, it had the form of a man, of a person, of a being. There's an angel here. Your son said it the other day. It's coming full circle. And he's speaking to us. And as the exhale, I got to see it. And as the exhale came, and before the light went off and the doors closed, whatever it was, the angel just went back. And then I woke up. And I thought, I woke up and I was startled. Because during that time, I heard... Two types of, there was a praising going on. Thank you, Lord, for your coming back for your people. As the exhale went out and then on the inhale of the angel going back, those that were left were screaming because they got left. And that made me understand something. Oh, Lord, may you always have an account on us. Prepare our hearts because where we're going, there has been, a, a, a brother Aaron said it the other day, the Lord has impregnated. And if you're in the spirit, you're going to know exactly what was said and now what is being said. The spirit of the Lord impregnated our brother, Tony, with this church. He has been given visions, signs, wonders to take us as the shepherd of this flock to where he wants to take us, the Lord. It has nothing to do with Tony, but his obedience to the Father has everything to do with it. Even our sister Michelle come in alongside her husband. Her obedience to the Father to come beside our brother Tony. Our lead pastors, our associate pastors, 
our elders, our deacons, to have such a profound love for our brother that we all come beside him, okay, and become the least of them. And as those droves, I mean droves, Tony's been saying it, 100, 100 fold. A hundredfold. Do you guys really know what that looks like? There's going to be people in here that are going to come in just like we did when we first got saved. Prepare your hearts. Whew. I love you guys. I really love you. I love you, Caesar. Okay, I'm so glad. Lord's done such a work in you, brother. Praise God for the work he's doing in you. If I don't call on you, don't take it personal. I love you guys. I don't even have to know you. Amen. Amen. Because that's what we're called to do. I want to be honest. When I first met Tony and all this fellowship stuff, I was like, this guy's crazy. Man, this is too much. <laughs> you know? This is... But, man, I love it. Amen. Huh? Uh, you guys are laughing because you guys know what I'm saying, huh? <laughs> but, okay, but we love Pastor Tony. We love him because he first loved the Lord, and he's bringing us, he's bringing us to him. He's drawing, he's using what God has given him, the authority and the power to lead the sheep to the Father, through Christ and the Father. And as he brings correction, embrace it. You know, embrace it when he leaves rebuke. When he loves on you, I know that everybody here has been corrected by Tony. I can see the faces are in. But it's not even Tony. It's the Lord bringing the correction to you. Right, Aaron? Amen. Amen. So, thank you, Lord. That's it. Amen. Let's pray again for Ray. Father, we thank you for the word. We know that he was being obedient in giving this word. And we ask that you refill him now. That the refilling would be from our response to this word. That it wouldn't just be that we say amen, but that our lives would say amen. That we receive this, Father. We return back to our first love. None of us, don't let any of us think we're above it, Father. But even if we are already at your feet, may we lay longer, stay longer, seek longer. Bless Ray for giving us this word and bless this church in return. In Jesus' name, amen.